The sermon, the sermon title today is called The Wall and the Line. The Wall and the Line. Something is revealed when you have both. Amen? Amen. Something is revealed when you have both. I'm going to explain that more in a little bit. But when you have both, something is revealed. When you have both the wall and the line. Let's go to Zechariah chapter number 4. Zechariah chapter number 4. Verse 7. What are you, you great mountain? Before Zerubbabel you will become a plain. He will bring out the top stone with shouts of grace, grace to it. Verse 8, also the Lord, I'm sorry, also the word of the Lord came to me saying, the hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house and his hands will finish it. Then you will know that the Lord of armies has sent me to you. For who has shown contempt for the day of small things? But these seven will rejoice when they see the plumb line in the hand of Zerubbabel. They are the eyes of the Lord roaming throughout the earth. Come on, what are the eyes of the Lord? This plumb line. The eyes of the Lord roaming to and fro throughout the earth. Who liked the High Places series? Anybody? Amen. I loved it. Yeah. I absolutely loved it. Yeah. And it won't be finished. This is just where we live now. We live in this territory where we're standing on the spine. Okay? We have the victory and we'll walk that way. Yeah. I'm going to recap it a little bit just so none of us are lost. Okay? Our High Places series caused us to glean some incredible truths. Amen? Amen. The spiritual battles that rage are not limited to us playing defense all of our lives, simply trying to survive the onslaught. Remember that mentality that we had yeah. before approaching the high places? Yeah. We're not just playing defense all of our lives saying, okay, I can withstand, I can withstand, but we're going on the offensive. Amen. The enemy's afraid of me. Yeah. Who's sick and tired of being afraid of the enemy? Yeah. Yeah. Being intimidated by the things he tries to impose upon us. He has no power. That's right. He's powerless. Except we don't know the God we serve. Amen. Yeah. Have you forgotten about the, the Red Sea? Mm. Have you forgotten about the Jordan? Have you forgotten about the lepers being cleansed? Have yeah. you forgotten? Mm. My hope is that everyone would hear this word. I'm going to try to pack everything I can into 59 minutes. Which means I'm going fast, I'm going strong, and I'm going to give it a whirl. Amen. Please don't miss it. Please don't check out. Please don't zone out. Nope. Please don't get bored. Please don't let the sweat drops hit your eye and make you frustrated. Nope. Come on, who's alive and well with me? Come on. High places, let us glean some truths. Yeah. The spiritual battles that rage are not limited to us just playing defense all of our lives, just trying to survive. We advance into realms of the offensive nature. Marching to the high place ground takes the enemy by surprise. You know why? Because you were never supposed to be there. There's a culture, a church culture that's taught you, you're not supposed to go to the high grounds and take back. We stay down here. We play defense. That's not what the word of the Lord says. Nope. We go. We make disciples. Disciples don't magically happen. They don't happen in one year, two years, three. They happen over the course of a lifetime. Amen. But nobody likes to commit to that. We like to hire worthless, reckless people to do work they can never accomplish the way the Bible commands it. What if we spent a lifetime raising something up? Yes. Yeah. Many Christians are rocked to sleep by ideologies that we are to be intimidated by the principalities and just seek to weather their storms. We are gleaning from God's word in this church to take back. Yeah. Somebody shout, take back with a little grit. Take back! 
All right, I'm going to run through the uh, sermons together. First was the attitude of a cynic. The Spirit of the Lord showed us the way to approach the high ground. You got to have a little bit of an attitude. Yeah. Just a little bit of grit. Anybody ever want to get somebody somewhere and somebody was in line in front of you? When there's enough on the line, you don't care who you step in front of to get there. I was fixing to miss a plane in a certain country once. And I cut in front of an immigration line that had at least 500 people in it. Do you think I cared at all who I offended? No. Because there's a $700 ticket in my wife's birthday waiting on the success of me Amen. getting on that plane. What are they going to do? I don't even speak that language. I'm just a confused white guy trying to get on a plane. <clears throat> the attitude of assent. There's a way in which you approach. This is probably a fan favorite. Like a mother. Yeah. Amen. Like a mother showing us how to rise up and the importance of having that ownership. Anybody like a mother? Yeah. Any, I'm sorry, anybody like the, the sermon like a mother? Yeah. What about the terrain where we were taught to be aware of that which we must endure? Yeah. There are slippery places. Yeah. There are rocks that don't hold their ground and then cause us to stumble. Be ready for them. Don't be caught off guard. Yeah. What about outfitted where the Spirit of the Lord showed us what kind of feet we have? We can stand places that when you stand in the ground and look, it doesn't look like you should ever be able to stand there. Except the Spirit of the Lord says, He'll give you feet like hinds feet. Amen. And what about standing on the spine? Well, Pastor Zach and Pastor Jake talked to us about making soup out of the enemy's yeah. face. You say, that's aggressive. Yeah, I know, and those churches all over this land talking fluffy talk today, politically correct and sweet talk, yeah. and everybody leaves completely unchanged. Yeah. Right. That's correct. I'll take 40 or 50 who will be gritty and go into any place they go with the full gospel. Amen. Amen. Get it on now. Come on. Remember, we don't want the greatest impact of our ministry to be the traffic jam we cause on the Sunday morning we dismiss. Mm -hmm. If we ever need the police... To direct traffic leaving this facility, you'll know I've been in the grave a long, long time. <laughs> a long, long time. Standing on the spine taught us the aggression required to follow the full glory and weight. Pastor Jake talked about the glory, the weight of God smashing down powers of darkness. Hey, can we read Joel chapter 2, verse 11? We're going to make some sense of this. I'm doing some pastoral home type talk, and it's going to be some preaching. You guys with me? Yeah. Anybody going to fall asleep? No. Nope. Anybody nope. going to um, gonna get discouraged? No. Nope. Nope. Now we're ready. We're trying to work on our wireless mic so we can roam about the plane a little bit. For now, I'm limited to this. What is about 8 to 10 feet, I guess, of cord. Joel chapter 2 verse 11 says, The Lord utters his voice before his army. His camp is very great indeed. For mighty is the one who carries out his word. Come on, church. Mighty is the one who carries out the word. The day of the Lord is great, very awesome. Who can endure it? Y'all want to get informed a little bit? Yeah, yeah. Our next season of sermons will have a very clear directive, as they all do. Y'all ready to know what it is? Yeah. Who's ready? Who's listening nice and loud, nice and good? Yeah. <clears throat> well, before we introduce that directive, I want to explain why your pastors see this as important. When you hear us place verbal emphasis on Bible studies on unity, on prayer. It's not for the sake of numbers. In fact, we've never done a roll call or head count in our life. It's not about finances. My God brings water from a rock. Amen. Yes. He'll accomplish everything He wants. 
It's about the direction of a corporate body. Yeah. Amen. We have to move forward together to be successful as a corporate church body. Amen. Three of you can be successful, seven can flounder, and we will rejoice over the success of a few, but the body's going to have a bit of a hiccup because we need forward motion together. Amen. We place verbal emphasis on these things because it's a heavenly responsibility to lead the body forward advancing. And advancing corporately is heavily contingent upon the strength of an individual and family advancement. Amen. It's going to get real personal real quick. Yeah. This sermon series might be in the face of your flesh more than anyone has ever been in your life. Okay. But what's beautiful is that all we're really trying to accomplish is unity. Amen. You can get mad at the truth, but you can't get mad at me. The truth doesn't move. I don't have an interpretation of that truth other than what the Lord says. But truth has a steadiness. Truth is plumb. Yeah. So truth doesn't move. And you can't make it move. All you can do is twist the way you live and wind up with a crooked wall. But you can't bend truth. How will we accomplish this ability to remain in a place of treading upon the high places and tearing down high places? Should we have more prayer meetings? Absolutely. Prayer is important. Get in the streets and declare. Yeah, I'm a fan of that. But do you know how the word says the Lord carries out his work? Through obedient servants. Mm. Great is the army who carries out his word. In other words, great are the ones who do what God says. It's not as mystical and hyper-spiritual as we think. Do what God says. Amen. Dare to believe Him when all odds are against you. Pray in the Spirit. Desire fellowship and company. The Spirit of the Lord is raising up a company of believers in this place yep. who will shake the nations. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. We've had some anniversaries celebrated, and I think it might be one today. My days are getting mixed up, but Chris Edens actually has an anniversary today. Amen. Y'all might not think it, but they've been married 12 years. The only reason I know that is because I saw it on a text thread. <laughs> if I would have had to guess on the spot, I'd have said 20. I have no capacity for time. I'm already struggling to remember Zachariah's birthday. And it was two days ago. You can't be gifted in every area. And numbers is not mine. Dates, anyway. Merry Christmas, by the way. <laughs> to be successful... We have to remain unified in our ability to carry out his word. The reason I mentioned the anniversary because some anniversaries have been celebrated. Zach and Jessica have been married a good number of years. Eleven years. And you look back at the pictures of when God brought them together. You think, oh, that's sweet, that's special. Hey, we got it going on in this house. We got an engaged couple. Amen. Don't you see the nations being reached though? Yeah. When the Lord gave me my wife, who's now given us our eighth child, I see the nations knowing the name of Jesus. Amen. In our church, that's the direction we're heading. It takes time to build that. We're running a marathon, not a sprint. But that doesn't mean we're lazy. We still drink our water on the run. We still use the bathroom on the run. Amen.
in our church, here's what you can begin to see occurring. The people are studying the same sections of the word. Mm. We're using terminology that's familiar to each other. Yeah. That means that's unity. Yeah. Anybody who was at the birthday celebration of Ian Harris Woo! at the local Cracker Barrel yeah. heard the man of God preach what I label as his first message ever. Amen. On a chair in the middle of a public place Amen. that he works at with no regard for the fact that he could probably be fired for that. But if you listen at his language, it's so similar to the way we've been talking and preaching. Why? Because he's the son of this house. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. We talk the same. Yeah. We're fighting battles together. Amen. We're drawing closer together. Our children are being born. We celebrate together. Families are beginning and we're doing this together. In other words, this set of core values is starting to define a culture of a company. Mm. Marriages that carry a certain standard. Parenting that carries a certain standard. Relationships that carry certain standards. The enemy would try to set up his standard. But God has given us the standard. Amen. We yeah. have it. When the church body functions in this manner of agreement, it allows us to grow together. So reject even subtle forms of division. And overcome the limitations that prohibit the church from experiencing the fullness of how the Spirit can dwell among a body of believers. Amen. Reject even the most subtle things yeah. that would cause you to want to separate yourself from the direction of a body. Yeah. It's perfectly okay that. We can like the same things and have some things we dislike. Not talking about that. I mean, Adrian got me hooked on semi-automatic shotguns. I have no problem telling you that I love them because Adrian loves them. Mike, Mike got me hooked. Oh my goodness! <laughs> How did I guess it? <laughs> I think he, I think he might be creating a scapegoat now. And I'm gonna say, I'm gonna shoot that one down for you, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Zach has me hooked on a particular brand of knife. Hallelujah. It's not silly or coy, it's family life. Amen. I'm really not my own man. I'm a part of a company. Yeah. Yeah. In the one association, in the men and women of God around the globe that we don't even know. We're a family. Yeah. Of course, there's little differences, but what I'm talking about is an overarching unity that finds satisfaction in how yeah. desperately we need each other and how much I enjoy that we bear things up together. Yeah. I love that while Kathleen's in labor, there's a small army praying. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I love that my pastors aren't asleep. Yeah. I love that. I love that many of you weren't asleep. That makes you feel a certain way in battle that's inexpressible. Amen. We want to be a culture achieving biblical standards of unity to live out the process of discipleship to the fullest degree. We're not going to create an environment where you can slip under the radar or avoid confrontation. We're not going to create a church environment where a person could limit their accountability to people who simply will tell them what they want to hear. We have standards that are known corporately, therefore they are known by all. Does that make sense? Amen. Yeah. So I'm not going to run off to Jose and talk to him about a problem that I'm having because I know he's going to tell me what I want to hear. Because 
Jose is corporately in the same mindset as everyone else. Yeah. There's a standard. Yes. It sounds challenging and difficult, doesn't it? Except it's beautiful. And though beautiful has to be seriously fought for. I mean, we have so much flesh pumping through our veins. That you have to really fight for something like this. Amen. Amen. Can we go to Amos 7 real quick? And I want to read something. Amos 7, chapter 7. I mean, yeah, Amos 7, verse 7. Amos chapter 7, verse number 7. Thus he showed me, and behold, the Lord was standing by a vertical wall with a plumb line in his hand. I guess this wall is about as vertical as we can get, Michael. Stand beside that. And yes, you do get to be the Lord. <laughs> in this skit, which we rarely do. I knew you'd love that. Thus he showed me, and behold, the Lord was standing beside a vertical wall with a plumb line in his hand. I feel like there's a lot of emphasis on the plumb line, and it should be. But what was sticking out to me when I was thinking about this is the wall. The wall. You need both to determine how well you're doing. This is the fruit of your life. This is the standard. This is the Lord holding the standard. And come on, we can't miss this. I'm going to keep reading. Amos is showed a picture of the Lord standing beside a vertical wall with a plumb line in his hand. And then the Lord does what I love about the Lord. He has a conversation with the men and women of God that he interacts with. Yeah, and you know what he says? What do you see, Amos? Amos says, I see a plumb line. And the Lord said, behold, I'm about to put a plumb line in the midst of my people, Israel. And I will spare them no longer. The high places of Isaac will be desolated. And the sanctuaries of Israel will be laid waste. Then I will rise up against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. The word plumb line mentioned in the Bible it's Strong's number 68, H68. It's the word Eben, coming from the root word meaning to build. Anybody ever built something and used a level? Okay. On occasion, I haven't. Okay. And you can tell it when I'm done. Always. You can always tell it when I'm done. Because it's leaning. The word also has to do with precious stones or foundational stones and more often than not in the word when it's translated the word eben it is have to do it does have to do with a stone or something precious that's being placed so what's so distinct about this plumb line or a plummet meaning you can hold this from the top actually let me describe what michael's holding it's a weight attached to the end of the string on one end when it is allowed to dangle freely, an exact vertical line can be established. Amen. This is exact. In the world of carpentry or construction, you call it true. Exactly what you call it. Okay? Or plumb. You start laying flooring, get to the end of the job, and uh, the flooring up there, there's a space like that. And by the time you get down here, there's a space like that. It's because something's not true. Right. Something's not plumb. Mm -hmm. You don't know it till the end if you didn't start with plumb. Right. It's a weight attached to the end of the string. Some might call it a level. Carpenters and other trades, as I said, they use this to establish direct straight lines 
that allow for precise angles, precise angles, and they indicate a direct route from where Michael's hand is to that spot on the floor where that weight is pointing is exactly straight, exactly plumb. When left untouched, the plumb line remains true. All work, everybody say all work. All work. All work must align to it or be at risk of being out of order or crooked. The plumb line remains true. It is the standard that when one is working, they consistently look towards. Hold that up beside that wall, Michael. Let's see how Zach did. This wall is crooked. Okay? The wall is 100% crooked. I'll take it, Michael. Thank you, boss. This wall... Hey, it's been in three different church locations. One church, three locations. That's what they say. The side of this podium... Straight as an arrow. Anybody ever seen a plumb line? Yep. Does this look a little old fashioned to you? Yep. In other countries where levels aren't as plentiful, they take water. clear tubing, water. put it in, put a couple drops of water in it, and level it up that way. Same concept as a level that we would go by from Lowe's. It sets something as true. When this, when this plumb line stops moving, it has produced for you a standard that if you hold to and build towards and remain in alignment with, then at the conclusion of your building, you will be spot on. Amen. And this is mentioned in the Word of God. Yes. <laughs> Y'all look at a few other examples of the word Eben. Yes. Isaiah 28. Verse 13, the word of the Lord to them will be order on order, order on order, line on line, line on line, a little here and a little there, that they may go and stumble backwards, be broken, snared, and taken captive. Verse 14, therefore hear the word of the Lord, O scoffers, who rule this people who are in Jerusalem, because you have said we've made a covenant with death and with Sheol, we have made a pact. The overwhelming scourge will not reach us when it passes by, for we have made falsehood our refuge. We have concealed ourselves with deception. Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I'm laying in Zion a stone, a tested stone, a costly cornerstone for the foundation firmly placed. He who believes in it will not be disturbed. I will make justice the measuring line and righteousness the level. Then hail will sweep away the refuge of lies and the waters will overflow the secret place. Want to hear another one? How about Genesis 2811? Is everybody with me? Yeah. He came to a certain place and he spent the night there because the sun had set. And then he took a stone from the place put it under his head, and laid down there all night. Whether we're talking about a cornerstone that sets the template for the whole construction, or we're talking about a plumb line that's hanging down, giving us true straight, what's being said is this. There is truth, there is order, there is a standard, and the closer we hold to that, the better off your 20 years from now will be. Right. Amen. Is it never too late in the kingdom? Of course not. Can God redeem and bring back? Yes, of course he can. I don't need to give all those disclaimers. I need to put the weight on our shoulders today yeah. that we can never take our eye off the standard. Yeah. Never take our eye off that which is plumb. Amen. We can get our own ideas, our own mentalities. Oh, that's your interpretation 
of the word. That's how you see it. This is how I see it. And on and on and on again we go. How do you get unity like that? You don't. You kill your flesh. You find the standard that's written and proven throughout God's word. And then you hold to it like your house will crumble in 20 years if you don't because it'll be so crooked and unstable. Amen. He's given us this plumb line. But what does not exist today is just in your life, in my life, what does not exist is just a plumb line. You know what else is there? A wall. And you and I both have to come face to face with how closely aligned our wall is to what is true. Amen. Let's consider a couple newer Testament scriptures. Mark 12, 12. Have you not even read the scripture? The stone which the builders rejected, this became the chief corner stone. 1 Peter 2, 6 through 8. For this is contained in the scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a choice stone, a precious corner stone. Remember, all of the this stone is absolutely interrelated with the plumb line yes. because it is a standard. Mm -hmm. It allows us to build appropriately. Yes. Come on, who's in construct? Who would attempt to build a single thing without a level? Do you know why you need a level? I, I can't count on one hand at least, and he's always generous about it, but if Zach walks over and looks at something I built, he say, that don't look level. Well, I say, it does look level. He might say, that's a little off. Do you know what you say? Get the level. <laughs> Your eye don't see right. Your eye does not see right. And I'm telling you, way more times than not, I've looked at something and said, that's perfectly level, only to find out the left side has to come up two inches. <laughs> You need the plumb line. You need the standard. Amen. Otherwise, yeah. otherwise, do I need to give the examples? No. Yeah. Otherwise, the merchandise you carry on your body yeah. might not even determine the gender you are. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's how sick and twisted the world is getting yeah. when truth is dismissed. What's true is you are who you are when you are born with the merchandise that you have from your mother's womb. I had a baby boy two days ago, and he will never be able to choose that he's a girl. That's from hell. That's because we're shifting truth. What's true doesn't move. It doesn't move. You can't move truth. Truth is truth. When you dismiss truth, then everything is subject to how somebody sees it. And they have to be polite to how you see it, because otherwise it debunked their theory of open-mindedness. Everyone is not subject to their own interpretation of the truth. Everyone is not subject to just doing it how they want to do it. Amen. Our marriages are not subject to how we think they should function best. Yeah. Our parenting is not subject to how we think it most looks best for our family. It's not subject to that. It's subject to truth. Amen. The truth is the only standard we have That's if right. we're going to be victorious. Yes. The only thing that we have is that which is plumb. Amen. Hey, this is going to be a tough series. Be good. I'm telling you, it's going to be hard. If we want to blame it on the heat that we just can't be here for the summer, I'll know it's just because you don't want this sermon series. Zach and Jake are going to teach it. <laughs> it's to refine us. It's to help us. Who wants the strongest marriage possible? Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Who wants to be able to disciple their children the strongest way possible? Tell yeah. me. Who wants to have relationships yeah. Amen. that are as healthy as yeah. possible? Yes. Amen. Who wants to be a church family that's healthy as possible? Yeah. Yeah. We walk through confrontation a certain way. You don't have a way you pick and choose to walk through that. There's a standard. Amen. This is a gift. 
I would hate to show up on a construction job and, and find out I don't have a level. I'm going to build a crooked house. You know what would delight me to no end? Somebody show up and hand me a level. I wouldn't be offended that I had a level. I wouldn't be sad that I had a level. I'd be so happy to hold in my hand truth. That's right. Who's going to get offended when you find out something that you're doing a little bit wrong and you need to get level up? Anybody? Anybody going to get a little sad? No. Nope. Because if, if you do, we're as ignorant as the carpenter who throws the level in the trash. First Peter in verse 7, this, this precious value calls it precious. It's a chief cornerstone. It's a precious stone. Why? Because it lets everything be built right. But it says in 8, a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble because they are disobedient to the word and to this doom they will be appointed. Acts 4.11 says he is the stone which is rejected. Apparently a lot of people don't like levels. A lot of people don't like the plumb. Usually when I don't use them, it's because I don't want to walk to the shed to get it. Okay? I can eyeball that and it'll be just fine. Wrong. Though I am on a scale of 1 to 10, I have a pretty good eye. Maybe 8 and a half out of 10. That's still not perfect. And I don't want to gamble with the other 1.5%. Do you? And maybe I overshot there a little bit. As long as I'm hating everything about five foot eight, five foot nine, I can see it. Acts 4.11, he is the stone which was rejected by you, the builders, but which became the chief cornerstone. And then how about Romans 9.33? Just as it was written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stone of stumbling, a rock of offense, and he who believes in him will not be disappointed. Now, I, know I went through those quickly, but let's look. For failing to fall into the pattern, what are some of the consequences? Did y'all pick up on the words? Disappointment. Yeah. Anybody ever got to the end of that construction project and that thing was out of whack and it's discouraging? Yeah. I put a window in a shed that was easily two inches low on the left side than the right ones. Sarah and Chris are trembling because they're wondering, well, this guy built my house. Chris and Marty are considering looking elsewhere. Just so you know, I mostly make phone calls, okay? Level phone calls. Plum phone calls. Still have a few more to make. We're getting close. I want us to notice the link between stone and plumb line. We're not going to exhaust this today because this is stuff we're going to be teaching on for weeks. I'm introducing something to us today. Who's excited? Yeah. yeah. Who's hot? Yeah. Come on. Hot enough. The link between the stone and the plumb line is this. They are things that set the standard. Each of them in their own capacity establishing something true to build to. How do you know what to build to unless you have something true to build to? A mark. Well, if truth is not set, then what really is the mark? What really are we aiming for? We're seeing a culture emerge that has no concept of truth. Godlessness will run rampant because of that. The stone and the plumb line both set the standard. The wall is the fruit of your life. The results of what you're building. Come on, everybody with me? Yes. Who wants to build something true yes. in this house? I do. Yeah. If we reference back to Amos. And consider how God came and he held it next to a wall. Because he was going to show whether it was true or not. And essentially he's saying the days are gone where people can justify their crooked ways. A 
Our God does not negotiate or change. Numbers 23, 19 affirms this, that God is not like a man that he would change his mind. Yeah. He doesn't change his standards. Yeah. God does not change. Right. And now comes the exciting part. This affords us a great opportunity. That in doing it, we accomplish two great tasks. One of them is building rightly. You build rightly. What you're building with your life, you know, in 5, 10, 15, 20 years is going to still be in alignment with God's standard. Yes. Amen. But in doing that, something else also happens. You get to be the one holding the plumb line. Now, some of this will be a little vague today, but I'm excited we got weeks and weeks and weeks to preach on this. But you hold the standard. Yeah. Yeah. Because you uphold the standard. Amen. I don't want this to go over our heads. And I'm not going to complicate it too much today. But we can hear from Moses in Exodus chapter 25 and verse number 40. The emphasis the Lord is placing upon him. Build according to the pattern. Yeah. Yeah. Build according to the pattern. Build according to the pattern. And what I'm saying the Lord is leading us into is speaking about that in a way that's not just a generic example, a generic statement, a generic illustration. Build according to the pattern and, and you'll have it. No, I'm, we're going to talk about our homes. Yeah. We're going to talk about those things. We're going to talk about our relationships. Yes. Talk about the different roles, functions we have in our body. Yeah. You sit in this body and feel like you don't have a point. We're going to take care of that. There's a reason you sit in here. And it's not to be the one speaking and teaching all the time. The one that's heard, that's not it. We're a family. There are things which the Lord does that if we will allow him to do them, they may seem like the quiet, most insignificant ways to be used by God, yet they're extremely important. Amen. Just cut your thumb off and see how well you do in life. That Instagram would definitely get a little slower. <laughs> Let it run. Vic, you still got a flip phone? Yes. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> That's why if he texts back good, it's G00D. Good. We're going to talk about a structure for raising our children. We all got a lot of little kids in here, right? Yes. Anybody like the idea of a structure? Amen. Well, it's not submission ministry structure. My plumb line would be a mess, I'm telling you. This is the structure of the word of the Lord. That's right. It is our standard as a church because it's the standard of the word. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now we got fans going. I wouldn't be surprised if some of us just lift right up in the air. I like seeing it. It's getting hot. I'm uh I'm halfway through a three-hour message, Jessica. No, we're... Listen, we're good. <laughs> Half. Guys, can I say this? Bezalel and Aholiab, they built according to the pattern that was given to them by Moses, that was given to them by God. He was seeking to establish something right. The cornerstone. The plumb line. It's that we would be able to get in right order. Yeah. So that as we build, it's built rightly. Yes. That's why we focus on building such a strong foundation. What we must take away today is a simple truth of the standard yes. or the plumb line. Everybody with me? Yeah. yeah. We've been given that which... All things must be leveled to. As individuals, 
We must approach everything in our life as to be in order with that. The same is true for the culture of our corporate church body. We uphold together and thereby walk in greater levels of unity, not merely subject to our own interpretation of the way something should be. Truth bends for no one. Yeah. Truth is what it is. Yeah. And we have the responsibility to align to truth. Yeah. Amen. Truth bends for no one. Yeah. Are we operating in our marriages according to the plumb line? Not trying to isolate out people groups. This message is for everybody in this room. If we hold our life to the plumb line. Yeah. If we hold our marriages to the plumb line. If we hold our responsibility to parent our children to the plumb line. Not that they're perfect. I'm talking about our approach. Yeah. Not their performance. Our approach. That part will come. Amen. I'm talking about our approach. The plumb line, the standard, what God says is true, what the Lord says is right, what the Lord says will produce a rightly built structure. Amen. You abandon this and you have a crooked wall. Yep. Crooked walls lead to crooked roofs. Crooked roofs collapse under pressure. As individuals, are we in line with the plumb line? Are we shepherding our children according to the standard? I mean, anybody ever honestly said that? Well, uh, it works best this way for my family, so I just do it this way. Except then everybody's got a way. There's a standard. There's a standard. I'm not talking about the food we eat or the diets we keep. Not talking about the clothes we dress our kids in. We're not going to start wearing uniforms. Don't take this in directions it's not intended to be taken. But there is a standard that is set by the word of God. Amen. At the role and responsibility of fathers. Yes. Of mothers. Yes. Of men and women. Amen. Are you willing to jeopardize getting 20 years downrange and being so far from the plumb line? No. Hold that line now. Yeah. Don't let small shifts affect that which the Lord is seeking to build yeah. within yeah. you. Don't let the little subtle shifts impact what the Lord is actually desiring to produce 20 years down the road. Yeah. That's why it's worth killing your flesh Quickly. Amen. Yeah. Amen. It's worth killing that flesh quickly. Because 20 years from now, there will be a wall standing. Yeah. And there will still be a plumb line that has never moved. That's right. Ever. Right. Has never moved. Ancient. It's ancient of days. Small compromise leads to great error. And for this reason, the prophet Amos declares this truth. The plumb line is established. No more justification for crooked building. Church, we're going to move into a season of messages that are going to challenge our flesh. They're going to challenge our flesh in ways like never before. You say, well, how does this fit with the high ground? Because when you're standing on the spine of the enemy, that is definitely no time to get lazy. No time to drop our guard. No time to lay back. It's time to press in. And because we're very interested in corporate advancement, we have to be very interested in how we are growing 
as individuals and families because that directly affects the corporate growth. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. So we're going to address these things corporately. Yeah. You say, well, I'm going to sit through this. I'm not a husband or a wife. Yeah, but you're a part of this church body. Yeah. We desperately need this family to function well together. Amen. Amen. What if my kid's doing something that you know I wouldn't approve of, but I can't see it? Don't you love them enough to say, that's not the standard yeah. of your father and mother, nor the standard of this church? Yeah. Don't do that. Amen. Man, that leads to a healthy community. Yeah. But that rushes in the face of our flesh, doesn't it? Yeah. I've never minded a coach yelling at my kid on a ball field, though. Never minded it. Yep, it'll bring the best right out of them. But if a man or woman of God corrects them and we get offended, could we be more ignorant in our life? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I need you. Yeah. Amen. And equally... You need me. Yes, amen. These lessons will challenge our flesh, but they will encourage us. Yes. They will offend us, but they will change us forever. Amen. Yeah. Because no matter how much it hurts, I know this from my time on a chiropractor table. <laughs> no matter how much it hurts to get realigned, nothing feels quite as good as being there. Amen. No matter how bad it hurts, to have your knee brought to your shoulder in a very uncomfortable manner. Once you get there, it's nice to be there. <clears throat> Let's go back to Zechariah chapter 4, please. And yeah. This is all that we're going to reveal to the body today. This is preparation day. Perspiration day. <laughs> that was pretty good. I'll give it to you. Everybody well? Yeah. Come on, who's excited about what the Lord's doing in our body? Hallelujah. Hey, this is Him sharpening us and shaping us. Amen. This is Him teaching us to function as a unit. We're together in the fight. Yes. It's beautiful. Amen? Amen. Amen. The plumb line is in the hand of Zerubbabel. These are the eyes of the Lord roaming throughout the earth. The eyes of the Lord roaming throughout the earth. I want us to think about this. We're given the opportunity to build something that lines up with God's standard. He's given us that opportunity. How do we know? Because he's given us a standard. He's given us a level. We know his expectations and there is a standard laid out. We get the chance to build according to that standard. Yeah. And I want you guys to think on this for a few days. The eyes of the Lord roaming throughout the earth. Come on, church, you with me? Yeah. The eyes of the Lord, he's roaming throughout the earth, and he's looking. And he's looking for hearts that will be wholly his. Does that make sense? Yeah. We have a wall. We have a line. We have an opportunity to build something. We have an opportunity to be a man or woman of God that when he when his eyes roam throughout the whole earth, he'll find a heart that's holy his. Amen. Will you pray, church, that the Lord will ready your heart? Yeah. yeah. Will you pray that he'll align your heart in such a way that the high place labor is not in vain. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, it's not in vain that we've gotten here, is it? No. 
It's not in vain that we've come to this place at this time so that we can now flounder. No, the standard. The standard. Ready yourself in prayer because we're going to destroy principalities. Amen. And this is not a magical one-time prayer event or an emotional experience or a conference or a seminar that might make you feel good for a week. This is a lifestyle, a commitment to something that requires faithfulness over time. Amen. It is faithfulness over time and obedience no matter the cost. No matter the cost. I'm going to hold it up one more time. Church, you with me? Yeah. No matter the cost. I want you to get this picture in your mind this week as you're thinking about the series that's coming up. The season of messages that's coming up. The Lord loves us enough to get us to high place territory standing on the spine of the enemy and still remind us there's this standard here that has never moved. In all of, since all of creation, the standard of God has never moved. Amen. And to prove to his own people that he would no longer approve of crooked ways. He showed a prophet, a wall and a plumb line. Yeah. What he's going to do in this time is he's going to show you the plumb line, but you got to be ready. He's going to show you your wall. Amen. Does that make sense? Yeah. I'm not trying to be creative with my wording. He's going to show you your life. He's going to show you your walk. He's going to show you things you have done. And he's going to show you maybe ideologies and mentalities and habits that you have right now. That may not be far from the line. But if you're building and you're even that far from the line, you give it about 10 feet and you're embarrassed. Very embarrassed. He's going to show us both the wall and the line. And then he's going to show us how to get in alignment. Don't think an offensive thing if you're building a wall and somebody hands you a level. Come on. Do not find it offensive if you're building a house and somebody drops off a level. Let's get I'm ready in my heart for it as much as anybody else. Lord, show me. Yes. Show me how to make my marriage more in alignment with your plumb line. Amen. Show me how to disciple and raise my children more in alignment with your plumb line. Amen. Show me how to build relationships and shepherd people and, 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 and stand as a pastor rightly according to your plumb line. Amen. You, you got to come hungry. Yeah. You got to come ready to be exposed. Yeah. But I'm telling you, realignment hurts just for a minute. Yeah. Alignment. Feels good for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, y'all want to get aligned? Yeah. Yeah. Ain't but one way to do it. The plumb line. Let's stand to our feet together.